specific conversation, since they talked to many customers each day, indicating that most likely the phone call probably wasn't out of the ordinary, and therefore wouldn't stand out. Around a month before the shooting, Evan checked the yoga class schedule, and on October 14th, 2018, he booked a hotel room at the Tallahassee Suburban Extended Stay for October 31st through November 1st. He purchased ammo at the Central Florida Pawn Shop on October 27th, which was consistent with the ammunition found at the shooting scene. Evan went to an Orange City, Florida Walmart on October 31st, 2018, and bought a yoga mat and protective hearing equipment. Later that day, around 7.22 p.m., he went to a different Walmart in Live Oak, Florida, and bought more hearing protection. An hour and a half later, at 8.52 p.m., Evan checked into room 206. Did he spend his next two days planning? Was he talking himself in and out of going through with it? Evan's precise whereabouts and movements in those couple of days are unknown. It was just scary not knowing at the time, is there someone on the loose? Is there someone else? Just a lot of unanswered questions that we didn't have for hours. On October 2nd, 2018, he left the hotel at 4.35 p.m., carrying a black bag and wearing a fanny pack. Evan had no intention of returning to the hotel. He planned to die that day. He wouldn't die before he killed other innocent victims. But he did know. He wasn't coming back to room 206. Though, he did leave multiple items behind in the room, including his two room keys. And open fire. I've seen a lot of bad scenes uh, and, and seen some bad things. This is the worst. 61-year-old Dr. Nancy Van Vessem was born on August 8, 1957. Nancy graduated from Washington State's Mark Morris High School in 1975. Her parents, John and Veda, preceded her in death, and she had one brother that lived in Vancouver. After high school, after high school Nancy went to Pacific Lutheran University in Tacoma, Washington, graduating summa cum laude with a bachelor's degree in chemistry. From there, she went to St. Louis University School of Medicine in Missouri. She graduated with her medical degree in 1983. In 1984, she completed her internship at the University of Utah Medical Center. After that, in 1985, she completed a residency there, and another at Loyola University Medical Center in Illinois in 1986. She worked as an internal medicine specialist at Capital Health Plan for nearly 24 years, but was most recently employed as the chief medical officer. Dr. Nancy was known to be an optimist and was very outgoing and friendly. She was always looking to see what she could do to improve others' health. Believing in the total overall benefits of yoga, Nancy attended yoga classes multiple times a week. It was her escape from the pressures of her demanding job. Helping others was her calling, and Dr. Nancy's life mission was to see others be healthy and happy. There was one word that perfectly summed up Dr. Van Vessem. Selfless. Dr. Nancy had three daughters whom she loved more than anything else. Her entire face truly lit up when she spoke of her family. Her daughters lost their mother far too young, and were only in their twenties at the time of the shooting. Nancy's professional life flourished. She was a talented doctor, and held the position as one of the first clerkship directors for internal medicine at FSU's College of Medicine. Earlier that year, specifically in the spring of 2018, she joined the Tallahassee Regional Campus Community Board. The loss of Dr. Nancy Van Vessem will be felt deeply by the community, and to say she will be greatly missed is an understatement. Maura Elaine Binkley was only 21 years old when she was senselessly murdered. Born on March 4, 1997, in Atlanta, Georgia, to parents Jeff and Margaret, Maura also had a brother named Sean. She attended Austin Elementary School and then went to Peachtree Middle School, finally graduating from Dunwoody High School in 2015. During high school, Maura was a varsity cheerleader 
as well as the co-editor of the school yearbook. Fluent in German, she participated in the German exchange program and even studied for a period in Nuremberg, Germany. Forever loyal to those she loved, Mara was known as gentle and kind. A former Girl Scout, she was also a proud member of St. James United Methodist Church. Mora received an academic scholarship for Florida State University. She was actually a fourth-generation FSU student and was in her senior year when she was killed. Her family still lived in Atlanta at the time she was murdered. Mora was a double major in German and editing and writing and media. Yet, academics were far from her only interest, as evidenced by her service as vice president of chapter development for her sorority, the Alpha Eta chapter of Delta, Delta, Delta. Earlier that year, Mora received the Winthrop King Scholarship from the Department of Modern Language at FSU, which allowed her to study for four months at the University of Wuppertal in Germany, traveling over Europe. An aspiring teacher, Mora hoped to land a job with Teach for America. In fact, she was studying and preparing for her interview at the time of her death. All Mora ever wanted was to help people, and she staunchly detested gun violence. Earlier in 2018, Mora and her dad happened to run into a Parkland victim's father in the lobby of a hotel in Tallahassee. Students and parents from the Parkland shooting were at the Capitol to protest gun violence. The families discussed how awful the shooting at Parkland was though her parents, never in a million years, thought they would walk in those same shoes only months later. Mora was set to graduate in May, and in the meantime, she volunteered teaching in a literacy program. There are very few souls in this world who are so pure, and just want to help others, contributing everything they can back to society. To learn such values at such a young age, when many kids her age are partying and still trying to figure themselves out, is a testament to the incredible young woman that she already was. Mora loved to cook and listen to NPR with her dad. Her death was far too soon, and her friends, family, and everyone she touched will miss her beyond words. She had a presence no matter where she was. I mean, whether she, you met her in the hall or you were talking to her one-on-one. -on -one. At first, I was just like, why? Why her? Why did this happen? Why Tallahassee? Like, all the questions that everyone else was asking. I was just really confused and thinking about why would someone do something like that? Because that's just disgusting. She should be here. She should be with her friends. She should be with her family. She shouldn't be gone like this. I'll never be over it. It's just the pain has lightened. There's a hole in that class. There's a an empty space and the space that she could occupy that, that you know her presence is no longer there tallahassee is the capital city of the state of florida and the county seat of leon county the city was established in 1824 it covers approximately 103 square miles and had a population of 181,000 in 2019 tallahassee is home to florida state university Florida A&M University, and Tallahassee Community College. The state's top employers include the state of Florida, with about 19,000 employees, and Florida State University, with nearly 14,000 employees. One primary source of arts and entertainment is the Railroad Square Art Park, which has several metal art sculptures and various stores selling art. The city is home to many museums and hosts several festivals, including the Greek Food Festival, Springtime Tallahassee, the Tallahassee Wine and Food Festival, and Downtown Get Down, which is basically a massive FSU pep rally. There are over 800 law enforcement officers in Tallahassee, spanning a variety of agencies including the Tallahassee PD, Leon County Sheriff's Department, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, Florida Capitol Police, FSU PD, Florida A&M University PD, Tallahassee Community College PD, Florida Highway Patrol, and the Florida Fish and Wildlife. The city averages approximately 9,600 crimes per year, including about eight. The city averages approximately 9,600 crimes per year, including about 8,000 property crimes 
and about 1,600 violent crimes, and an average of 20 murders per year. However, the majority of the city is safe, and much of the crime in Tallahassee is petty crime. We have an active shooter! 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 Evan was born on September 4th, 1978, making him 40 years old at the time of the shooting. He was born in Deltona, Florida, and had a sister and two stepbrothers. Evan graduated from Vestal High School in 1997, but while attending school, he was a newspaper carrier for the Press and Sun Bulletin, and did well. Named Carrier of the Month in 1997. He was a member of the high school government, and had been elected vice president of his senior class. Evan wasn't only successful academically, but he was also a student athlete, winning an athletic student award in football. A well-rounded young man, he was even an Eagle Scout. During high school, Evan would mow the neighbor's lawns for extra money. After high school, he attended the State University of New York, obtaining a bachelor's degree in 2002. Evan's mom claimed that he had separation anxiety, though the research didn't show whether he was diagnosed with this or if his mom just believed this herself. Otherwise, he was never diagnosed with any type of mental illness. Evan was not successful in romantic relationships, which his mother says was a source of incredible frustration for Evan. He longed to have a companionship with a significant other. After the shooting, his mom wouldn't let the police interview Evan's dad because he wasn't able to talk because of a medical issue. However, we were unable to establish what exactly that medical issue is, or was. Evan liked to write song lyrics, and they frequently included lines about torturing and raping women, and killing people. Because of the disturbing topics they discovered their son writing about, his parents slept with their beg- because of the disturbing topics they discovered their son was writing about. His parents slept with their bedroom door locked, at all times. Once, during high school, Evan asked a girl out to the school dance. She said no, and in response, he grabbed her butt. It appears that he got into trouble because of this, but the extent of the punishment was not available. Another time at his niece's birthday party, Evan was helping young girls off of a water slide, inappropriately touching and grabbing their butts. These actions clearly upset the parents at the party, making them extremely uncomfortable. So Evan's mom and dad escorted him from the property, but law enforcement was never contacted. Evan worked as a teacher for about two years in Maryland at Meade High School from 2005 through 2007. The research didn't explain why he stopped teaching, but based on his history of problematic behaviors, assumptions and conclusions could be drawn, though we won't speculate on this podcast. He enlisted in the United States Army on January 30th, 2008. Evan bought a 40 caliber Glock handgun from Uncle Sam's Pawn and Gun in Lawton, Oklahoma on March 6, 2009, and on March 25th the same year, he purchased another firearm a 9mm Glock handgun from Uncle Sam's Pawn and Gun. A little over a year later, Evan was dishonorably discharged on June 8, 2010 from the Army for inappropriate contact with female soldiers. On December 7, 2012, he was arrested by the FSU police for battery. The arrest arose from an incident where he grabbed a woman's butt at the campus dining hall. When questioned about the incident, Evan merely suggested that he just bumped into her. In 2013, he sold the 40 Glock to a pawn shop in Tallahassee called Diamonds and Gold Pawn Shop, and on May 3rd, Evan graduated from FSU. He didn't keep out of trouble, though. On July 2nd, 2014, he was arrested again by FSU police for trespassing when he was caught following an FSU volleyball coach near the gym on campus. Evan was told he was banned from the campus but about one month later, he was found at a campus restaurant. Evan was arrested for trespassing after that incident. 
on April 25th, 2015.